Hi, uh, uh, this is a video uh, manual for uh, Sentinel EPO software, uh, um, which is commonly used in fast food or uh, places like ice cream shop, coffee shop. Uh, so in the menu, there are two parts. One are the categories on the top and then the products inside each category. For example, in burger meals, there are all burger meals in breakfast, all the breakfast and then the ice cream and cold refreshment. So uh, first of all, I'll show you how to add a product. So if you want to add something, let's say in cold refreshment, uh, you need to go to the manager, go to pause option, products, click on the category you want to add product then press the add button write the product name for example you want to add maybe Pepsi can and price and press save so now if we go back in the cold refreshment there's a new button Pepsi can when you press it will charge the relevant price now I need to show you how to add a product with multiple prices. Sometimes, uh, for example, you are selling Pepsi, uh, but Pepsi got multiple prices. Uh, maybe uh, you got multiple sizes for, let's say, two liter Pepsi, can of Pepsi, or 500 ml Pepsi. So you need to go again to the categories, and first you need to find the category which which has the multiple sizes. In this scenario, we got cold refreshment edit the category and then click on has option give the first option name for example can second option name 1.5 liter third option name 500 ml for example and once you done press update when you press update it will ask for the printer name just open and choose any printer from here it doesn't matter which one you choose and press save now you go back to products go to the category you want to add a multi price product let's say pepsi can add it and now instead of can we'll just write here pepsi because it's got different variation and tick here which says has options and press control key on the keyboard and select all three of these and press ok now instead of giving price here do zero give the price here on the bottom for example 150 for 500 ml to 20 for 1.5 liter and 90 pence for can and press update what will happen now if we go to the refreshment again and press pepsi it will give us all the options 500 ml 1.5 liter or can and based on your selection it will charge the uh, relevant uh, price so this is how you add the product that got multiple sizes now i'll show you how to add a new category let's say you are <coughs> sorry let's say you are uh, selling slush and you want to open a new category called slush so to open a new category you need to go to the pause option again go to the category press add write the category name make sure you tick on a status it will make the category visible select the menu default printer name is already selected if the category has any option tick on option for example you got regular slush and then you got large slush add and then press save this will create a new category so if you go to the products now you will find the new category slush on the bottom at the moment there are no products inside so we can start by making red slush and instead of giving price here we will give price as option and then give price here 0 0.90 for regular and 1.40 for large and press save now if we go back again and click the slush red slush it will show you both options at the moment the software is showing the currency euro you can change the currency into sterling pound euro or us dollar you need to go to advanced settings and then currency you can change it to US pound as well or if you are in US you can change it to dollar or <coughs> euro if you are in Europe okay so so far we learned how to add a category how to add a product with single price and how to add a product with multiple variation or multiple uh, price level 
now I'll show you how to link the subscreen for example uh, in the slush you want to add a screen asking customer if they want slush uh, let's say in a cup or uh, maybe you are doing in a bottle so you can make an option cup or bottle first of all you need to make a subscreen to make a subscreen again you need to go to the pause option category you need to make a category so now what we'll do we will make a category for subscreen so because it's a slush options so we will you can name it anything you want but I'll rename it sub slush and this time I will not take here a status because we don't want this category to be visible on the main page the purpose of making this category is just to use it as a subscreen so we will choose the default menu and pr press save now the new category sub slush is made we can go to the products we can go to the sub slush and we can make two options for example first option is in class and second option is in bottle and save so now what we have done we have made a category which is not visible as you can see if I go to the category the sub slush is not visible here and then I've put I've made two options inside in a glass or in a bottle now I'll show you how to link this category with products inside the slush so we need to go to the manager go to the products go to the extra options choose the category you want to link product which is slush choose the product you want to link with subcategory which is red slush and then choose the option you want to link so we want to link with both options so we will first choose regular press add click on sub slush how many clicks this screen should close for example there's only one selection customer can either take slush in a glass or in a bottle so we will do just one click but if there is more than one selection for example let's say you are selling a pizza and customer and you are attaching a topping screen for pizza and customer can have up to three toppings then you can do three here so the software will close the sub screen after uh, three clicks so in our scenario I'll do one do you want to charge customer extra for any option if you don't want to charge just leave it unchecked and press add and save same you need to do with large as well add slub slush add save so now with the sub red slush large and regular both we have linked the category called sub slush so if we go now and click on slush press red slush regular it will open the sub menu in glass or in bottle as soon as we click on it it will close automatically so this is how you link the sub category uh, with the products okay uh, now when we done already how to make the category how to make the products and how to link the sub category with product I'll show you how to adjust these category buttons and the product buttons as well so for now let's start with the products button there are two kind of products buttons supported in the software so to change the product color you go to products choose the category you want to change the product colors and then click on settings okay so if you don't take on full back color and click update all what the software will do I'll show you next what will happen so if we go to the breakfast see it the background of the button is white and then it just underlined the red you can underline different product for example if it's vegetarian product you can underline green if it's a spicy product you can do uh, red uh, to do the button individually instead of I'll show you again instead of checkbox update all you do one by one so for example when you're changing something to green let's say you want to change this cheese on toast to green underline go to settings and choose the green color and instead of taking this update all because if you press update all it will update all the buttons and make the underline green in this category so don't tick here and press save close close and then if you go see the cheese on toast is green underline green so this is the one way of doing button but if you prefer button in whole one color for example in kids menu the all buttons are green you can go back 
two products choose a category go to settings and this time tick here full back color update all and then you can choose color you can change the height size font size anything from here and press save close close and then if we go to the kids menu again it's all blue same color now I'll show you how to rearrange the button so let's say you want lasagna first chicken curry second beef burger third so what how you can achieve this you go to the manager you go to the products choose the category then go to position and here on this screen you need to start from zero and then start increasing so let's say if you want lasagna zero chicken curry one beef burger two hot dog three then maybe you want cheese pizza four chicken burger five cheeseburger six macaroni cheese seven eight nine ten eleven once you're done press the save and it will rearrange the button automatically so if we go to the kids menu now all the buttons are rearranged same thing you can do in category as well in the category you can go to the category you can use this positions to assign the positions or you can press the settings button to assign the color for category update all will update all categories and if you want to do one by one you need to click one by one press setting and assign the size font and the color for the category itself so this is how you change the button color and size now we move to the setting area advanced setting area in the settings area first thing you can define which printer you're using for printing the default receipt which is the printer next to the till then if you're using a kitchen printer you can define which printer you are using maybe you got multiple kitchen printer more than one printer so you can define which printer you're using for kitchen printing also you can define here how many receipt you got with each order so for example with each in order you maybe you want to receive which take away one with delivery maybe you want to receive one for you one for driver for collection and then how many receipt you want to send on the kitchen one or two and once you change the setting you need to press this green save button and it will apply the changes minimum order is it reminds you what's the minimum order so let's say if you do 10 here if the order value is under 10 for delivery it will the software will remind you that the order is not meeting the minimum order requirement and you need to ask customer to add some more food service charge if you are a restaurant or if you are delivering food and you're charging the for example 50 pence per order as a service charge you can write a service charge here credit card charges is in uk is not uh, applicable anymore because you can't charge customer for credit card uh, if you're outside uk you can write the customer credit card charges here if you're charging anything extra for credit card transaction order number is charged is what will be the number of first order if you want the order number to start from 1, the first order will be 1. If you want the order number to start from 100, the first order will be 101. These two are for customer loyalty scheme. Default delivery time. When you finish the order on the receipt, it shows wanted time. So let's say if you are taking a takeaway order, I'll show you so you fully understand what I mean. So if I take a takeaway order and press pay, there's an option, for example, customer might be saying that I'm not at home at the moment or if the customer walking into your shop and he want to place an order and he said, don't make it now, make it ready after 15 minutes. So if you want anything and if you want to change the time, you can change from this clock as well. For example, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 45 minutes, so you can choose, choose your own time as well. If you're not giving software, a time from here then when you finish the order the software will read the value read the time value settings from here so by default what's your takeaway time what's your collection time what's your delivery time and what's the change screen time change screen is when you press finish the order and this change screen comes in front of you so how many seconds you want to show the change screen before it disappear itself or you can always press the done button and it will disappear so this settings here is the seconds that change screen will display so if you do 10 seconds it will display only for 10 seconds <coughs> hide order number will hide the order number
from receipt and from order list. Has second screen is for the EPO system. If you've got dual screen EPO system, you need to make sure that this checkbox is checked always. Random order number, it assigns order number. Instead of giving order number a sequence like one, two, three, four, it gives a random order number. Active payment sense, if you are using our credit card terminal, you can integrate the credit card machine with your EPO system. So when you finish a credit card transaction, instead of, instead of tapping in the amount in the credit card machine, the software automatically send the total of the transaction to the credit card machine. And all you need to do is ask the customer to enter the PIN and verify the transaction. It will only work if you're using a card terminal provided by our partner Payment Sense. Show finish screen. If you want to show finish screen on delivery order, on collection order, on eating order. So basically the finish screen is this screen. If you don't want the software to show the finish screen and finish automatically without giving you the option for cash and credit card, then you can tick on the configuration settings, untick here and it won't show. For example, for the collection order, by default, it will do all the collection order not paid and it will won't show the finishing screen. So if I take the collection order now and press the pay button, it won't show the finished screen and automatically save the collection order as not paid pending. Order list is to see all the order list. From here, you can cancel any order. You can edit any order. You can send text message to customer. To send text message to customer, obviously if it's a delivery order or collection order and if the customer got a telephone number, then you can send the text messages. You need to buy account by a company called textlocal.com and it roughly costs around two pence per text message and then you can send marketing text to all your customer. Direction is for fast food. So to see the direction and everything. For kitchen screen, for the kitchen printer, if you don't want any category to go onto the kitchen printer, you need to go to the categories or sorry, you need to go on products. Choose the category you don't want to send on kitchen printer. Tick here and press update. Now, whenever you take order, if the, if the order contains any product from breakfast category, this will not print on the kitchen printer. It will only print on the first front printer. So, for example, if you are taking drinks order, and food order and you don't want drinks to go onto the kitchen printer you can just choose the drink category from here and tick here not print on kitchen and press update and it will configure the software to and the software will not send these products the cold refreshment products to the kitchen category now we learned almost all the options for products and categories and uh, configuring the printers and the kitchen printers you can add up to 5 10 kitchen printers so for example if you got a big massive kitchen and you got pizza oven on a kitchen on one side and kebab grill on the second side and you want to install two printer one for pizza oven and one for kebab you can achieve this and you can configure the software to send the pizza product to the pizza printer and kebab product to the kebab printers as well so you can use as many printer as you want in a kitchen and you will have full control what to send on which printer uh, using this printer settings. Now we'll move to the tables. Tables is basically uh, if you have a restaurant or if you have a customer who, if you got a sitting arrangement and customer eat food uh, when they sit in, uh, then you need to use this eat in button. Eat in button, you can see all your tables and then you can assign a table to customer, tell customer how many people eating food on the table and then take the order and once you press paid the software will automatically save the order and make the table occupied so once the customer finish eating food you can go on click on this red table go to payment and choose the payment method and then the table will be released automatically but if you are a restaurant or if you're a small cafe and you take money upfront then you don't need to assign a table number because customer can pay you on the till and they can sit on any table and finish their food. So if you're a small cafe, you need to go to the tables and then on add floor, 
remove this floor what will happen once you remove the floor the eating button will start working directly so it won't ask you for any table it will just show on the receipt eaten so your staff knows that they need to serve food on a tray not in a carrier bag uh, and then you can avoid the steps that ask for table number and number of people but in case you are a restaurant then you need to make the floor first so to make the floor you need to go to the tables go to the floor setup give a floor a name any name for example if you got two floor ground floor first floor you can do ground and then press save so now this floor is created now you double click on this white area once the floor is created you go to the table set setup go to the ground and then double click on this white area you can drag drop this table anywhere according to your layout for example if you got table on different places you can place the table and then double click on this boxes to give it a name for example table one table two table three table four table five once you're done press save button and it will make the tables for you and then you can start taking the order number of person uh, still if you are restaurant and you are not assigning if you don't want to assign a table to a customer you can press this no table and you can start taking the order straight away to see the end of the day sales you need to go to the manager go to the reports in the reports it shows you cash sale not paid sale if for example if somebody placed in collection order and they did not came uh, turn up to collect the food so not paid card sale if there is any and then the total sale and then the sale by user if you press X report it will print this information but it will not reset the sales but if you press Z report it will print this information and then it resets the sale to zero so let's say if you press Z report on Monday night and then you forgot to press the Z report on Tuesday and on Wednesday when you see the sale it will show you combined sale for Tuesday and Wednesday so every night you need to press Z report in order to get the right figures for the day or if you are concluding your accounts at the end of the week you need to do Z report every week if you press Z report by mistake you can still see the sales by date range so you can choose any date from here and then it will show you the sales and you can click on sales analysis report it will print the same information sales analysis chart it shows you products how many products you've sold like breakfast toast how many sold but if you want to see by departments or by category it will show you by category as well and you can print this information as well hourly sale will show you hourly sale expense chart will show you expenses user time sheet if you want this software to clock in clock out your staff and if you want to calculate the number of hours your staff worked in you can use this sheet uh, it automatically clock in clock out and it will show you how many hours the staff work during the week and then you can pay them accordingly driver payment is for driver takeaway driver and terminal report is for credit card reports now I'll show you how to report uh, design your receipts and reports to the design your re receipt you need to go to advance and then report designer in the report designer every category got its main report so let's say if you want to change and modify the takeaway main report which is takeaway receipt main receipt you double click on takeaway main report because this is the designer it could take up to 5 to 15 seconds to load the designer and then it shows you the receipt this is your company name if you want to make bigger the font size you can make bigger or smaller make it bold shop address shop postcode shop city your telephone number order type is it takeaway order delivery order order number and then the product so the product name is you know this description if you want your product big you can always increase the font size here 12 and make it bold as well and it will make the product bigger on the receipt if you want to write any message on the bottom you can double click here and text for your custom you can write anything here and it will show on the bottom of receipt 
So this is how you design the report and uh, the receipt. Uh, this is the main rep report if you want to make changes on your kitchen report then you need to go for example take away kitchen report so take away kitchen report and then you can for example if you don't want on take away kitchen report to show prices you can remove this subtotal you can move the quantity on the right hand side you can make the product area bigger and you can always increase the font size for the kitchen staff to read easily and press save and close it so this is how you design the reports now before I conclude this video I will show you one last thing user accounts uh, which is a very handy tool and it uh, allows you to restrict your staff to getting unnecessary information like the sales figure and to messing around with the software so to give permissions there are two groups or two when we sell the software it comes with two user account admin and user admin is a manager account for the owners and user is the uh, general staff account and then there are two groups as well test group and test group three you can rename the group first so for example test group is admin group i can rename the test group to admin so it's easy for you to understand and then I will rename this group to general staff and then I'll make one more group called staff restricted so now we have three groups here so first of all I'll show you how to assign permissions to the group so we have made one group called staff restricted we'll edit this group and then there is a user operation for example the member of this group staff restricted you just want to give them rights to create an order so as access granted add and then you want them to view order to edit order and then you don't want to give any other information like messing with shop information uh, going to the manager area driver config customer details floors and tables uh, so you just want to give them three options create order view order clear data and you don't even want to give them the right for canceling the order so now we press update so we have created what group called staff restricted and we only assign three of we just allow this group to have three rights which is create order view order and audit order now we go back to the user we create a new staff for example Dave we assign a password which is in numbers so we can assign it seven seven eight seven eight nine and then we assign this new staff member to staff restricted all other information are optional so all you need to do is give the staff username name password and the group it belongs and press save so we give the password 789 so if we log out and then log in with the newly made user account the password is 789 789 and login because when I was making the user I forgot to make this user active so I'll log in using the manager account and then I'll go back to users I will click on Dave edit and tick here is active so the software knows this account is now active and now I will log out <clears throat> login using the same password you can go you can always take the order because you have given the right to the staff member to log in the order and take the order you can go to order list you can view the order from here you can you can edit the order as well and if you if you press on the manager it says you have no access for the manager section so this staff effectively cannot see the sales figure or mess around with the products and category so this is how you restrict your staff members from 
uh, accessing the manager area and checking your sales and everything. Uh, I hope this video explains everything. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to contact me during the business hours and I'll be happy to help you. Thank you.